Hi, I'm Scott Wynn. Welcome to my shop. Today we're going to flatten a board with hand planes, an age-old technique. Uh, with the popularity of live-edge boards uh, using whole slabs, uh, increasing, increasing numbers of woodworkers are faced with how do you flatten a board uh, when it doesn't fit in your joiner. An 8-inch joiner for a small shop is uh, common, expensive, a 12-inch joiner is a luxury for sure. So if you've got the repeated project especially of having to flatten wide slabs, um, you should really learn the technique of using the, what I call the triumvirate of planes, which is the jack plane, joiner plane, and smooth plane. Uh, over the centuries, techniques were developed, um, and a plane was developed for each of the different tasks used in milling wood by hand. The three tasks are dimensioning and uh, shaping. That's the first task. This is from wood. It's been rough sawn or split out of a log. The next task is to straighten that and flatten the faces of it. And the third task is to make it smooth. The three planes developed for that were the jack plane. This is the dimensioning and uh, roughing out plane. The joiner plane for straightening and smoothing, flattening uh, faces and edges, and then the smoothing plane. Uh, within the last uh, 150 years or so, uh, Mr. Bailey invented uh, the Stanley style. It's now called the Stanley style plane. Stanley bought his patent, but uh, two years after he finished development of his, uh, of his design. Um, the Stanley plane does not make these planes obsolete. These still function perfectly for the task that they were uh, developed for. Stanley was developed more in response to changing um, nature of woodworking in an industrial age. The planes are just used less. They're ideal for uh, using occasionally. You can put them on the shelf, leave them there for weeks, come back, pull them back down, right where you set them. With any luck, you don't have to even adjust them. You can go right to work, put them back on the shelf. Um, but they have some drawbacks when you have to do major work. Number one, they're heavy. Uh, this is kind of a selling point in many planes, but if you're lifting this plane uh, several hundred times in order to flatten the board. Um, each pound of extra weight, you end up with several hundred pounds of lifting by the end of the day. The soles of these, this is a corrugated sole, supposedly to reduce um, friction. It doesn't actually reduce friction. <laughs> I had a long discussion with the engineer about that, but it may reduce um, resistance, uh, shall we say, the corrugations reduce a little bit of um, what we call air suction. As the surface becomes flatter and flatter, the joint between the sole, the plane, and the work becomes tighter and tighter. You're getting some resistance from the, from the closeness of fit with the air. So these have to be lubricated about, uh, well, the proponents of the iron planes won't say as much, but I think every 10 or 15 strokes you're going to have to lubricate this in order to um, keep the friction low enough. Uh, for heavy work, the handles don't work. These are nice, especially on the joiner plane, these are nice for precise strokes. But if you're lifting this all the time, you got some downward pressure, and this ridge starts to cut into your hand. Uh, if you pressure it straight down the palm of your hand, the screw can blister it out. It can be blistered around here. I find the same similar thing happens here. We get uh, a lot of wear on your hand here, sometimes here, um, and sometimes on the more poorly shaped ones in here and here as well. Um, the other thing is, especially the premium ones, they're extremely expensive. And finally, they only come in one blade angle and that's 45 degrees. And that can be a problem with more difficult woods. Now, these uh, are certainly not pretty. Um, and actually, these two were given to me. 
uh, it's one of the reasons why I started experimenting with them. Um, coming up with the exact same thing of having to surface a large board, I thought I'd give it a try. So I flattened out the bottom, sharpened it up. It's like, oh yeah, uh, I get it. This, this works. The great thing about these, um, the bigger ones, that, you know, they're getting similar in weight, still lighter, but the friction on the wood, wood bottom is quite a bit less. It's noticeably less. And um, when you have to go back to the iron plane and you haven't lubricated the bottom, you go, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Um, they come, can come, you can find them in different blade angles. Uh, this is 26 inches, which is actually quite nice for trilling boards. The longest um, Stanley style made now being made is the number seven, and that's 22 inches. This is a number eight, uh, an antique. Uh, this is at 24 inches. Um, and also, when you think about that, if you get a premium plane, especially like in a joint, you're up around $400. You can get these for quite a bit less. Uh, this one, this jack plane, given to me. Can't beat that price. This one I paid $25 for. Uh, I've reused the blade in um, my updated version of the model. The blade is worth three times that. The quality of the, the blades uh, are just so much better than the modern blades we have now that have been stamped out of, uh, out of bar stock or even plate stock. I always like this one if you look at it closely and see the scallops of the of the hammer on that. So um, these are all laminated, uh, hand worked, um, cast steel, which is a highly controlled uh, edge steel, tool steel, uh, very high quality, uh, very hard. Probably all those are over 60 uh, Rockwell. So. If you have large boards to do, and you say, well, I have Stanleys, you certainly can use the Stanleys. I think if you do it a lot, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But if you find that uh, you, you're not happy with your experience with the Stanleys, or you're doing it a lot, take a look at the antiques. For 25 bucks, 45 bucks, the price of these are going up eventually. They will get scarce. They're not scarce now. Uh, the quality of the blades are good. They can be found at different angles. They're lighter. Um, they have less friction. So over here, I updated these um, because I wanted to vary the angles and make some other changes. Now, the, one of the main issues that usually has to be dealt with on uh, an antique plane is the mouth opening is too big. And um, if the plane isn't cracked, and surprisingly, this one was held. I'm not sure I would have ever paid. It was given to me. I'm not sure I would have ever paid very much money for this because this cheap crack is pretty dangerous. These cracks in here often don't affect uh, the plane. Uh, but you almost certainly, except perhaps on the jack, which takes a wide mouth, um, you're going to have to reduce the mount. This is a typical repair uh, throat plate. This one is adjustable. It's been let in there and then uh, you can loosen that screw and move it back and forth to accommodate wear or to close the throat down if you want to get a smaller throat. So um, all these planes have been made with an adjustable throat plate. Uh, they have a simplified wedge. They're made from one block, so you don't have the issue of, of the glue line eventually failing. And um, I don't know how many old planes I've seen have been glued up and well, almost all failed. I think that's uh, not a good long-term solution. Uh, and uh, adjusted these angles 
and we'll talk about that uh, a little more in a few minutes, but all these have different angles that accommodate the tasks. Okay, I wanted to uh, make a fresh set. I wanted to make improvements over, well, I think are improvements over the traditional wooden planes. Um, I have specific angles for specific tasks and specific widths which are related to those tasks and the lengths of course and in order to simplify making the plane rather than the difficult uh, wedge style of the ears which has to be fitted to a matching escapement in the block we used a version of basically what is the Krenoff bearing plate except this one can be installed in a solid block. This does not have to be installed in a glued up piece. Additionally, to accommodate wear and uh, to adjustability, a throat plate has been fitted in there. And that is adjustable on a slotted hole and can be moved forward and backwards. The handles have been fit to my hand. The blade steel has been chosen according to the task that uh, each plane has got to do. Uh, there's a complete instructions in my book on how to do that. Uh, full size, well, actually scale drawings. We couldn't get full scale into the book. Uh, drawings as well as instructions on how to make this. Uh, in this case, uh, one technique that I use is to use the mortising attachment on a drill press to cut the uh, escapement for the blade. So. There's also instructions in here on refitting um, an antique. And this, is, this specific plane here, I think, is uh, covered. Putting that throat plate in there. And that's adjustable. And then the, um, in the black back we have plans for the different planes. So, and uh, uh, even more than what I cover here is in the book, um, a broad spe spectrum of planing. In order to understand uh, the anatomy of the planes and how um, portions of the anatomy are varied to make the task of flattening the board by hand um, efficient, I have isolated, uh, shall we say isolated, six tactics in the anatomy of, of the hand plane uh, that can be varied um, in relation to one another in order to perform various tasks more efficiently. And I'll go over these briefly. Um, again, they're in the book uh, repeatedly, actually. Uh, the first tactic is the angle of the blade. Uh, rule of thumb, lower angle, 40 degrees, 37 degrees, softwoods, intermediate angles to from about uh, 45, 47 and a half degrees up to 55 degrees hardwoods um, and over 55, 65, and sometimes even higher for tropical hardwoods. That's the rule of thumb, it's not real strict. Uh, a factor that plays into that is the task that the plane is going to do. So within a range of hardwoods, if a plane is meant to take more wood off, it'll be in the lower range of those blade angles. The smoothing plane will be in the higher range. So, for instance, here we have um, an English pattern jack plane. This has got a 40 degree angle. This is meant to take off uh, a lot of work. Uh, the second um, tactic is the mouth opening. Uh, kind of the rule of thumb is the mouth opening is equal to the biggest shaving that you're 
well at the time is equal to the shaving or bigger uh, than the shaving that you want to take off of that plane. So if you're hogging off a lot of wood, you've got a pretty wide open mouth. If you're smoothing, you, your throat to uh, the plane can be as thin as that shaving, which may be only a few thousandths of an inch. The third thing is, the, is a chip breaker. Chip breakers are recently, uh, fairly recently, I'd say 100, 150 years, maybe 200 years uh, development. I think it's the first started showing up in the 1700s. It's a way to increase reliability of the cut. Uh, the fourth thing is the bevel angle. Um, basically, the higher the pitch, the higher the angle of the blade, uh, the more stress that the bevel of the edge is under and that should be made a little thicker uh, so that it doesn't chatter in use. The uh, fifth thing is the shape of the blade. And um, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll demonstrate that with the different planes. And the last thing is the width and length of the plane. So if we go over the, uh, the basic three, the jack, joiner, and smooth, and there's some intermediate planes, uh, I can demonstrate uh, all those different tactics. So as I said on the jack plane, low angle, 40 degrees. Um, there is a chip breaker on here. It's set well back. Because it's not, uh, it's not going to be trying to get a smooth cut. It's going to, trying to remove a lot of work. And you can see even set back that far, all the um, um, oils in the wood have been vaporized on there because this plane does such heavy work. This plane has an adjustable throat. This throat is adjusted open uh, at least a sixteenth of an inch, if not an eighth of an inch wide. The bevel on this uh, is probably greater than 30 degrees just because of that stress it's on there. Uh, the shape of the blade, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, that's about a sixteenth of an inch camber over the width. Now some people like to measure that as a radius from a point uh, since they like to jig it up on a grinder and rotate it on that point, but I just, it's not critical that it be a true semicircle. Um, it just it has to be a, a rough semicircle about a, uh, I prefer about a sixteenth of an inch sweep on that. Um, the plane, at least in this uh, English pattern jack, uh, is longish. It's 14 inches. Uh, that's to get a good start on truing it, truing up. And, like, and it's narrow because we're not going to take a heavy shave. It's too much work for that deep a shaving to take a wide um, path. This is a four plane, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. This is the joiner plane. Um, this, uh, this angle comes up a little bit. This particular one I made at 47 and a half degrees uh, because I use it with hardwoods and the higher angles helps reduce tear out a little bit anyway. Uh, it's more to push though. You can feel it's a heavier cut. The mouth opening on this uh, you can see it's probably about uh, 30 second, a little more. Uh, that's going to be probably the heaviest shaving we're going to take off uh, with this plane, especially with this uh, width of blade. Chip breaker. Uh, on this one, I have set well down on, on the edge. In fact, it's, I don't know if you can catch that line of light. That shows as uh, probably less than a 64th on that uh, exposure on the blade. The blade on this, um, this one's probably got less than a 64th of a sweep. <clears throat> I'd say between 64th and uh, 32nd of a sweep over a blade this width will give you good results, especially when you're um, flattening boards. Uh, bevel angles, pretty much, uh, we're not, we're in the main frame of, of work, so the, Bevel angle on this is about 30 degrees. It's wide and it's long. 
so that uh, we can get a nice true surface so that it can be easily reached with the blade on the smoothing plane. These are the highest angles. This is a uh, 55 degree. Uh, it has an exceedingly small mouth when I adjust it down. Chip breaker is set right down on the edge, uh, as tight as this one at least. It's uh, wider than the jack plane, um, but not uh, as wide as this. It could be if you're willing to work that hard, uh, and it's a little more set up too. Um, the length is short for the opposite reason. This is long. <clears throat> this takes the high spots down, brings everything even. The smoothing plane is short so that it can get into those spots that might remain after you flatten the board with that. Uh, this one is at 55 in case I have particularly difficult wood. Uh, this is a four plane. Um, you use it before <laughs> other planes. Uh, people use it in different ways. Uh, I most often use it when I have a really long edge that has to be straightened. I use this to take off um, really heavy cuts to bring it down to fairly straight before I have to use the uh, jointer plane. Other people use it as a jack plane. Uh, the blade's a little wide, but some people prefer a wider plane. Uh, this is at, uh, I believe it's 43 and a half, uh, halfway, be, roughly halfway between this one and this one, uh, a little bit lower because it's meant to take a lot of wood off. Um, it has adjustable throat, chip breaker set back. Doesn't have to be again in terms of what you use, but it's and it's longer, so it's in prep. Use it on larger, larger pieces. Some people just prefer a larger plane uh, for the prep preparation work. Um, it gives more accurate results and kind of bridges between the jack and the joiner. And this is what I call a panel plane. Uh, this is uh, an intermediate smoother, um, meant to be used before a smoother or if uh, the wood is particularly compliant, uh, this will be the last plane you use on it. It's wider, um, a little bit wider than this. It's kind of a preparation and truing plane. Uh, the bottom is a little flatter. It's a little bit longer to get a better, a better surface. So if you have problems with it, you can come back with a smoothing plane and the smoothing plane um, will be able to reach all the different areas of the work. Now there's a second type of jack plane. This is a horn jack, uh, generally found in uh, Germany, uh, Scandinavian countries, Eastern Europe. Um, this is the English pattern jack. And here's the original version of it. This one's pretty wide. This one's wider than the one I made here. Uh, I, I like this a lot, it's short. So you're not getting quite um, a true surface off of it. It takes more user input. But the adjustment mechanism is very fast. It's very sweet. Uh, like the best adjustment mechanism, uh, bar none, really. And the ergonomics of the horn, you can put all your body can give it right down to the plane. Uh, no blistering, no hand fatigue, no cramps. So I use this one quite a lot partially because I go back and forth between the uh, depth of cut and this has the ability to do that. There's one more important plane that stands outside the triumvirate of uh, jack joiner and smoother and this is the scrub plane. So, scrub plane has almost an eighth of an inch sweep on the blade. It has a low angle, I think this one's at 40. Um, wide open throat, eighth of an inch throat. Short, this is user input. You're taking off the high spots you can see and you can uh, tell with the straight edge. Uh, I've rounded this off. They tend to come more square, but this horn plane, you know, really, frankly, this is such heavy work with this plane. Uh, don't bother to get it in iron. I don't think you'll be happy. Get a nice horn version like this. You can push this as long as you can stand and uh, you'll get tired before your hands are get tired or blistered. So that's quite nice. So you can see the dominant factors here is these angles, these curves of the blade. Now that's a jack. Now it's tapered off a little bit. 
and uh, I'm not sure you can see quite see the other ones, but they are curved as well. The smoothing plane is basically straight across, but dubbed off just at the edges so that we don't leave tracks in the work.